cow, you scared the crap out of me. What you doing? Anyhow, I was upstairs uh, editing these videos that you sent me. Uh, they turned out pretty good. Is this the uh, this the setup you used for them? Yeah, it worked out pretty good. The Muddy started taking five second videos after about a hundred videos. And I'm not, not really sure why. Too cold maybe? I don't know. Um, so you had to patch a few together there. And the uh, wild game only takes 15 second videos. So you had to shorten up some of the other ones so they matched. But yeah, it worked out pretty good. Yeah, I noticed that on the night uh, videos that uh, when the three deer were together that they were segmented. So I had to put three videos together to make it look like one video. But uh, I think they'll get the picture. So what are you doing with these, uh, these other cameras? Well, I'm getting those ready to uh, go up north. I'm cleaning the lenses, putting batteries in them, putting the chips in them, fixing the birdhouses that need to be fixed. Um, we are going up in two weeks, right? Well, that was a plan. There's uh, still snow up there. The map says 11 inches. But uh, I don't know. The funds are a little tight right now, too, with the coronavirus. Uh, I worked all week, but, uh, you know, we don't know what next week is going to bring. So uh, we'll just play it by ear. Well, I'm about to make the rest of the video. But uh, I got to clean something out of my pants first. Well, folks, you know, you can help him out by subscribing to his videos. Doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. You're going to have plenty of time right now to sit home and watch a few videos. So uh, why not subscribe to his videos and, uh, you know, spend, spend a couple hours watching his videos. So stay tuned. He'll be right back. Okay, folks, glad I got that taken care of. Uh, sometimes I, I'm glad to see him go. But anyhow, what we're here for today is uh, we're gonna do a, uh, a game camera review on three cameras that I bought here. I buy all these cameras at Menards usually and uh, Black Friday. You can get them anywhere. Dick Sporting Goods has the same cameras and they're all different versions. They're, you'll never see You'll never see the same version twice, it seems. It seems like they just keep throwing out different versions of these cameras, but they're all very similar, okay? So the first one on your left there is Muddy, okay? Um, $69 that came with the batteries and the chip. The one in the middle is the Wild Game. Wild Game was $39, came with no batteries and no SD card. And then this one on the end here is called a Hawk. This one was $59, came with the batteries and the chip. Okay, now last time I looked, a chip wasn't, didn't cost 20, chip and batteries I should say did not cost 20 bucks. So by far the wild game is the cheapest camera here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I set this up out in the backyard and I'm going to give you some, some triple shots here. They'll be in the same order that you're seeing it here. Muddy on the left, wild game in the middle, hawk on the right. Okay. And I have some daytime pictures of some deer. I have some nighttime pictures of some deer and I'm going to let you be the judge, you know, what you think is the best camera or the best picture from the camera. Now, I already know how I feel about it because if you look on my bench here in the back here, all of these are wild game cameras, okay? I am very impressed with the wild game cameras for one, one reason, a couple reasons actually. Um, one, they're cheap, okay? $39, all right? And you can have you can have nice pictures coming off of your field or your your trails where you hunt. Um, they all work. I've had these for a couple of years now. 
they all work. I put the little bird house over the top of them, you know, and that helps keep some of the snow and the rain and stuff off of them. Because I have had, in the past, I have had some that got wet and then they fail. Um, but I guess my point that I'm getting at is you can go out and spend $100 on $150, whatever you want to spend on a camera. You can go out and spend that. But when the bear comes and eats it or chews it up or the squirrels chew the buttons off of it and you can't make it work anymore, what do you got? You got a $100 camera that doesn't work. Here I'm only spending $39 and uh, you know, if they last two, three, four years, you know, that's what they last, you know? So, uh, so I, I myself, okay, I'm a wild game person, but you know, every now and then these other ones come up and they're reasonably priced and I'll, I'll buy them. But uh, I think you're gonna be surprised at what you see on these videos. So the first thing you wanna do with these game cameras is is the setup is 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 important um the one thing you got to watch out for is which way the sun is coming from okay you want to point the cameras if you can point them somewhat north and south is better than east and west because east and west you're going to get the sunrise and sunsets and that really messes with your your video quality and your pictures so if you can put them facing north seems to be the better way to put them um, but if you can face them north or south, that seems to be the best, the best direction for, for facing these cameras. Um, the other thing you want to make sure is you don't have, uh, branches in front of it. Um, because a branch waving in the wind, that'll set these things off and you'll have a hundred, hundred videos of a branch swinging and no deer on any of the pictures. So, uh, you want to make sure, you know, you don't have branches or anything in front of it. And, uh, and then the other thing, like I talked about before, is you know, I cover them up a little bit. I you can hang them right on a tree; they work that way. But but I cover them up a way I get a little more life out of them this way, and and uh, I think they they work pretty good. This this helps to shade some of the light um, when you when you have a bright sunny day, you know, and the sun's right above you. I mean, it helps to shade some of the light off the camera lens, you know. So. Uh, so what's next? You know, how do you how do you go pick a camera? You know, what 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 are you looking at when you go pick a camera? So I printed out this spec sheet. Okay, this is this is just a, this doesn't match any of these cameras here. This is just a spec sheet off the internet. I believe it was for a muddy 16 megapixel camera. Okay, so let's take a look at this for a second. So the first thing you want to look at is basically it's going to be the biggest thing on the package when, when, when you get when you go to the store and look at these and that is the 16 megapixels okay that number to me means absolutely nothing because I don't use the pictures I do videos okay so I you can have a 12 you can have a 14 you can have a 16 you can have a 20 I don't know if they make a 20 but you can have a 20 and it doesn't matter because what really matters is how the video is taken, okay? So that's the first thing you're gonna see. Second thing you wanna see is the trigger speed, okay? If you have a slow trigger speed, now this one here says one and a half seconds, okay? So that means when it, when it sees something, okay? Say, say a deer is walking in front of the camera, Okay, if you have it on a trail and you have it sideways to the trail, it's it's not gonna, it's not, it's probably gonna get the ass end of the deer. Okay? So the trigger speed at one and a half seconds, when it triggers the camera, it's one and a half seconds before it actually takes a picture, okay, or starts the video or whatever. Okay? It 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 has to generate inside the camera it, has, it takes us a few seconds to, to do that um, so at one and a half seconds that's that's pretty good I mean it's 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 fast enough so so when I set up my cameras I try and set them up out in an open area like on my food plots 
I do have a couple on trails just to see what's coming and going. And I'll use the, the lesser quality cameras on the trails because I don't really use those videos. Um, but you want to point it, you want to point it down the trail, like where the deer are coming from, deer are coming towards the camera, or the deer are walking away from the camera. You, you want to point it down the trail. You do not want to point it straight across the trail because all you're going to get, you're going to get either get head shots or you're going to get butt shots. Okay. So that's your, that's your trigger speed. That's what that, the, the lower that is, the better it is, you know, as far as I'm concerned. So all the rest of this stuff on here is really, you know, the housing is waterproof. Yeah, it better be waterproof. You're hanging it on a tree, you know? So most of the cameras I have here take eight batteries. This one says it takes six. You know, I put eight cam eight batteries in these cameras. They last me until almost August. And then I put new batteries in and then they last pretty much through the hunting season. You know, so um, and depending on which camera it is, I'll get up there, I'll have 300 videos on there to look through. And there's still, a, you know, a three quarters charge batteries in there yet. So. It doesn't use much for batteries. So, all right, so the third thing you really wanna look at on this sheet is gonna be your video mode, all right? So the video mode on this one says it's a standard VGA. I don't know what standard VGA is, but a lot of them will say 1080p or 720p. Um, the 720 gives you a very nice video. Uh, 1080 is going to be actually better. I don't know if there's any 4Ks out there. I really don't. You know, you're taking a picture of a deer in a field. Do you need a 4K? But I'm sure somebody does, you know. But uh, so this one says standard VGA. The, the one right below it is the video length. Okay. Now, I pointed that out before here that this wild game only takes 15 second videos okay so that's all it takes I can't adjust it on this this camera so that is kind of a negative for this camera right here okay but you take the muddy or this hawk I can adjust it I can do a 10 second video or I can do a uh, 30 second video I don't know I don't remember if this one goes up to 60 seconds or not um, but uh, but 60 seconds would be cool. You know, when you got deer standing out there in the middle of the field and, uh, and uh, you know, they're out there, they're out there half the day, you know, eating your food, food plots, you know, um, it, 60 second video would be cool. You get to see a lot more of what the deer are actually doing. Um, 30 second is good. I would say if you can find a 30 second video camera at a reasonable price, that's what you're looking for. And then, the detection range and the flash range, you know, 70 and 50 feet, okay, that's at night. Well, the detection range is at night, but the uh, flash range is at night. So, so picture 50 feet from your camera, whatever that is, that's how far that, that light will cast out and whatever's in that light is what you'll see, you know, in your, in your nighttime video. Um, so the fourth item that you wanna look at on this on this spec sheet it's going to be the trigger delay this one says it has seven options 10 seconds to 30 minutes okay so the trigger delay is going to be once it takes a video how long does it wait before it takes the next video so if you have deer standing in your food plot okay you want that to keep taking videos. You, even though it's a 30 second or a 15 second video, you want that to keep taking video. If it times out for over a minute, those deer are probably gonna be gone or they're gonna move to a different part of the field or whatever, you know, you're not gonna get good videos. So, so this one here says it goes up to 30 minutes, you know, uh, delay time. I don't know why you delay it 30 minutes, but whatever, you know, um, to me, 10 seconds is where I would have that set. And uh, every 10 seconds, it would take another video. Um, so, so you won't lose any of the, the deer activity in your field. So as far as, as far as the rest of this stuff on the sheet goes, you know, none of this, none of this really matters uh, to me uh, because I mount them to these boards here. Um, 
The temperature range is minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees. So I pull these around uh, Thanksgiving. It's usually not in the minus temperatures around Thanksgiving here. So, uh, so I really usually don't have any issues with the cold. Now I don't know if that muddy was a cold issue or not. I don't remember what the temperature was that night when, when those videos were taken. It was uh, somewhere around the beginning of March. Um, but we had some cold weather, so that could have been the issue there, you know, but uh, so that's the specs, you know, that's what you want to look for on a camera. That, that'll that tell you whether you're getting a good camera or not so good camera. The other thing I do is I have all of these cameras numbered. So I don't know how good you're going to be able to see that, but I have a number four on there. I also label the chip. I'll put a number four on the chip so I know that goes back in this camera, okay? And then when I have the chips out and I'm up there in the house and I'm looking at the videos, I know which camera that, that this came from. And I, you know, I can tell by where, what the background looks like too, but, but I know where, where the, these pictures came from then um, when I'm up there. So I, I always label my birdhouse. You could label the back of the camera, the bottom of the camera, however you want to do it. But uh, that's how I keep track of who's, who goes where. If you're watching my videos, the 2019 deer video that I put out, okay, the ones, the ones you're gonna see the most of are camera number one, is this wild game right here. So this is, this is on the smaller food plot, food plot number one, okay? And uh, that is, again, that's a very similar to this, uh, to this one here. It's almost the exact same camera, except this one does not have lights out, okay? That one, that one is considered a lights out, and I'll get to that in a little bit. But, uh, so this one here takes those pictures on food plot number one. Then I have this number two camera here. This one is a little different uh, style. It, it, takes the same pictures pretty much. But uh, this one's in between the two food plots, okay? This one's kind of on the trail. There's a trail there between the two food plots and that's where this one is located at. So number three, this one here is the main camera looking over the food plots where most of the deer pictures are, are coming from. Again, it's a wild game. Now this one here, it's a little, it's a little bit of a higher end camera than those other ones. This one here was probably a, a $59 or $69 uh, camera, okay? But I got it on sale. I, I believe I got it for $59, so it was probably a $69 camera. But uh, this one here is really good quality. It has a lot more options. I'm gonna show you that in a little bit here in the options on the screen. And uh, this one takes some really good pictures. So then uh, camera number four, that one's also in the big food plot, but it's over to the other side of the food plot. It's kind of out in the middle, like cut a tree off and uh, it's hanging on that the stump of that tree. And uh, that one's out in the middle of the field. And number five again is, is on a trail towards the back corner. Um, I really don't get a lot of pictures on this one here. I thought, you know, my deer were going through that back corner on a regular basis, and this is telling me that they're not. So, uh, so I have to rethink where I'm going to put this one for the for this spring. Why don't we look at these videos I took with these cameras? Now, the first thing I did was I set them up on the wall down here in the basement, and uh, I shut off all the lights. And I'm going to show you a little video of of what they look like. What 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 the deer are seeing when they look at the camera at, in the middle of the night, okay? So, I believe for that video I have these, the hawk and the muddy next to each other and then I have the wild game by itself. And it would be on your right hand side is the wild game. Now the wild game is called a blackout. So, you're not supposed to see the lights, okay? These two, you're gonna see red lights that's the infrared, that's what's making the flash, okay? Now, what I noticed, and we're gonna see this here, when I play this video, 
the camera, my camera, actually picks up the infrared from this from this blackout camera. Okay, I cannot see it with my own eyes, but the camera can see it for some reason. Okay, so I can't explain that to you. I'm not a scientist, but but that's just what I'm going to tell you. So when you see it on the video, you will see this infrared but I cannot see it through my eyes. So let's roll through that video quick. So the trick here is to get them all to trigger at the same time. So I'm gonna do a jumping jack in front of these cameras and see if they all trip. Okay, so with my eyes, the two on the left I can see. I can see the red lights. The one on the right, I see nothing. It's black on my eyes. Yet the camera, it picked it up. So the one on the right is considered a blackout. But it the, the issue with that camera is it only has a 15 second video where the other two are running at 30 seconds. It is not adjustable on that camera. So that explains why it was probably cheap. Let's see if I can trigger them again. So the one on the left is the hawk, the one in the middle is the muddy, the one on the right is the wild game. They were all comparable priced. Okay, so I hope that shed some light on uh, on uh, what you what you see or what the deer actually see at night. Okay, so so now let's let's go on and let's look at our videos that we took of the deer in the backyard. Now I live in a city. I have a wooded a wooded lot behind me, but it's just a single, you know, residential lot. There's a big woods across the street, so we have deer back here all the time, but they're not they're not here on a regular basis. So I threw some corn out there just to get them to come into the backyard, so I could get some videos. Um, so what you'll see is I'm going to split these up into three, three on a screen, okay. It's in the same order you got here. You got the muddy on the left, you got the wild game in the middle, and you got the hawk on the right. And, and you tell me what you think is the better quality camera. So let's go ahead and run through those videos. There's a couple of daytime shots, there's a couple of nighttime shots, and this should give you a good picture of what, of what the quality is of these cameras. What I saw on these pictures, on these videos, the clarity, the clarity of the nighttime shots, for one, you can see a definite difference. The wild game, to me, looked much better, okay? These seem to be kind of grainy, and there's something, there's something wrong with the pictures themselves. Also, with the daytime pictures, and I know, I know what it should look like because I know what kind of day it was when the deer were standing out there. This, this middle one here, the wild game camera, I think took the best picture because it looks natural. If you look at the sky through the trees, that's what the sky looked like that day, okay? That's what the snow looked like. That's, it was an off overcast day, you know, kind of not really foggy, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, these other two cameras, it's like they must have an auto enhanced feature in, in them or something because they're changing the colors. You know, the deer look more brown and uh, the whites, you can tell by the whites, they're not, it's not correct. It just isn't correct. And uh, so that's what I'm getting at with the quality of the camera. You know, just because you paid, you know, 70 bucks for a camera doesn't mean it's a good camera. It really doesn't. You know, you gotta, you gotta actually see the pictures to tell yourself that it's a, that it's a good camera or not. The megapixels means absolutely nothing because I believe this one was a 14. I believe this one's only a 12. So, um, so that's why I like the wild games. I'm, I'm impressed with the quality of their camera for what you're paying for them compared to these other ones. So, you know, it's to each his own, you know? If I was gonna tell you what, what camera to buy or what camera I buy, it's, it's gonna be the wild game. You know, and I'm not partial to wild game. Wild game doesn't sponsor me. This is just from my experience. I have, uh, what do I have here? I have uh, eight, eight cameras, 
just sitting here, I have uh, three, three more up north that I'm using as uh, surveillance cameras on the property around the, around the buildings. I have some really bad ones. I have a, um, it's a, it's, I want to say it's an onyx. It's, it's like they, it's like they tried to re, to, to use the name of Reconyx. Reconyx are very expensive cameras. They tried to use that name as a, as a catch thing. And, uh, and that camera is terrible. It takes terrible videos. It takes terrible night videos. It's just awful, but I use it. I got it right by the door on the garage and you know, I, I'll be able to tell if somebody's coming and going. That's why I use it there, you know? So there's bad cameras out there. Don't, just because one of these guys on TV with these hunting shows puts their name on a camera, it doesn't mean it's a good camera. I mean, I, I'm telling you to go out and get a wild game camera because I think of these cameras that I have here, the wild game is the better of the cameras. It takes the better pictures. The last thing, Last thing I want to do here is I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you one of these cameras once it's lit up and uh, the features that are in it. All right, so we're going to try and show you how this uh, camera works. So the, uh, the first thing you want is your chip goes in one way or the other. I'm going to have that in there, okay? And then your batteries go in they go two different directions. Now, the one thing that I don't care for on these cameras is when I'm out in the field and this is hanging on a tree, this isn't the easiest thing to do to get these batteries in and out because they just want to fall out the bottom on you, you know? So, and because I have them screwed on here, I can't just remove the camera. So, it's, it's one of those things you have to deal with it. Um, I have one up north there that has a separate battery pack where the whole battery pack comes out. That's kind of a nice feature, but these don't have that. So, you know, just make do. I, I have my little trick. I hold this, uh, I hold this thing like halfway here so that the batteries can't fall out and then I stick, stick the rest of them in. And it's kind of like you got to use both hands to get these to get the batteries in when you're out in the field. You know, if you can take the take the thing off the tree, it's it's much easier then. So there we go. We got the eight batteries in there. Got the chip in there. Now these this one here has the buttons down below. If you look at one of these other cameras, this one has the right inside the cover like that where you can see them better it still has the bottom the bottom battery pocket let's power this on so as you can see on this one here it has a lot of features um, it starts out with the ready then it has the clock, it has the date, it has the photos, number of photos, it has the image, it has the PIR. So if you if you scroll down, you hit this button here, this, uh, I believe it's the enter button. So each time you hit the enter button, it scrolls to the next thing. So the date, the photos, the image. So then uh, I have it on video. So the PIR is going to be, it gives you like high and still for the videos. It gives you all kinds of options there for, uh, for the timeouts and uh, you know, uh, all, all of that. It, this, this one has quite a, few, quite a few features. It's very hard for me to show you here on the camera. Resolution, and then at the bottom it has the delay, which is gonna be your, your how many second timeout. Um, so that one has, this one has quite a few features. So now let's look at a, a simpler version. I believe that would be this one here. So if we look at a simpler version. So on this one here, all you're gonna get, you get the time and the date, 
you get the number of photos and you get the image. So the image is just basically a still or video. The photos is just gonna be the number of photos and then your time and date stamp. So that's all you have on there for features. The rest of it is built into the camera. It's, it's, you have no option to change the timeout or anything else. So, so that's the difference between a good camera and uh, you know, this still takes a good picture, but you don't have as many options on it. Well, that's really it folks. I hope this video helps you in your decision to buy a game camera. Now, like I said earlier, I know there's a lot of stuff out there. There's expensive stuff. They got the stuff that works over your phone now. I mean, boy, how much money you wanna spend? Uh, you know, if you do the stuff over your phone, you need to have another service, like a Verizon service or something to uh, use those cameras. And, you know, so what? You're sitting at work and a video comes up of a nice buck on your property. It'll still be there. The picture will still be there when you get up there the next time, you know? So to me, those things are important. Um, anybody that knows me knows I'm kind of a, a cheap guy. I try and do everything on cheap. So, uh, so these cameras fit into my price range. That's why I'm using these cameras. Um, I'm sure I could go out and get a hundred dollar camera and show you a much better video and whatever, but I don't need it. I don't need, I don't need that. I'm just watching the deer on my property. So, so for the most part, these cameras serve me well. And uh, that, that was the point of this video, is to, uh, to give you some insight on what, what you really need to have for a camera and what you don't need to have. So I hope you enjoyed this video. You know, uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel and uh, thanks for watching.